Now, if we're talking about sauce, we've got to talk about jus. And if we're talking about jus, we've got to talk about red wine jus. One of my favorites and an all time classic of the jus world. Red wine, port, roasted shallot and mushroom, the flavor of tarragon, black pepper and bay leaf, bolstered with salt, vinegar, and a hit of fresh garlic. Let's get it. Now there's a few things you need to get in place in order to make a decent jus. There's a few control points you need to hit. But first off, we're gonna get onto our coloring to make sure that juice has a deep, rich flavor. And that comes in the form of portobello mushrooms. So down onto your board and you slice. And we're keeping these quite thick. I've also got some little button mushrooms here. I'm gonna just chuck those in half. Now get yourself a medium saucepan onto a medium heat. Couple of knobs of butter and your mushrooms go straight in. Always add a good pinch of salt into your mushrooms when you're sweating them down. The salt will help break down the mushrooms and release that water. So once this comes up to a light foam, stick a lid on and then just put it on the back and that's gonna saute off gently there for about 10 to 15 minutes. We want a really low heat. This isn't about flavor, this is about extracting the color, sweating down the mushroom and creating a super dark, intense hit to our sauce. So most sauces are built on a base of reduction and there's no difference with the sauce we're making today. Port and red wine in equal parts. Although it is called a red wine jus, we do add port because we like the sweetness, we like the depth, we like that fruity body that the port brings. So one bottle of port, one bottle of red, straight into a pan. Now to reduce something, you need to boil it fast over time. That will get rid of the moisture, the water in that thing and intensify the flavor. We're gonna do that just on the back. Next up is stock. Now, if you don't have good stock, you can't make a good sauce. I've got chicken stock here. It's a brown chicken stock straight into our pan. Same story with the wine. We're gonna put this on the back and reduce it down. The wine wants to come down by about a half. So half of the volume is left in the pan and the stock, we wanna bring it down by a third just to intensify that flavor. Another fun bit, caramelization. We're gonna start with shallots and mushrooms. Caramelize golden brown with oil and butter and that will add a sweet roasted flavor to this sauce. So take your shallot down onto the board. Bottom off, top off, and in half. Take off your skin. And now when we slice this shallot, I don't wanna go through the semicircles. I wanna go along it. I want long strips of shallot without any little bits that will burn during the caramelization process. Large frying pan, heavy bottom, even heat distribution, and a little bit of sunflower oil straight in. I like the heat that I can fry out when I use sunflower oil, but I also like the flavor of butter. So I'm gonna stick them in together. So once our butter is foaming, we can go shallots straight in. Now I'm not gonna put any salt in at this stage because I don't want the shallots to give their water too soon. I want them to caramelize and create a deep golden brown. Mushroom down to the board and we slice. Now this is a bit of a restaurant secret and a top tip. When you're reducing your wine, your port, your white wine, if you add a handful of raw sliced button mushroom, it will help take away the harshness of that wine and you'll just be left with that full body flavor. So we've just started to build the layers of caramelization on these shallots. The edges are golden brown, the smaller bits are starting to really get some nice caramelization on them. At this stage, that's when we're gonna put in the mushrooms. Now what do mushrooms do when they first hit the pan? They soak up all the oil. They're porous, they're sponges. They're gonna take your pan from being beautifully lubricated with that stunning butter and oil into a bit of a dry burning hazard. At this stage, you just need to stay over it, keep working it, do not turn the pan down, but keep everything moving inside it. Now the mushrooms have started to give their juice and I can start to smell that homely caramelization. We're gonna add a tiny bit more butter. There's a second layer of caramelization and a second layer of flavor. Adding the butter at this stage is gonna help that deep caramelization of the onion and the mushroom. That will eventually get transferred over into the flavor and the base of that sauce. Making sauces is all about stages. Moving through the correct motions, making sure each stage of flavor building, each stage of caramelization is perfect. Deep, dark, and golden brown. Now our mushrooms and shallots are caramelized. We pour them into a sieve just to drain off any excess fat because we want the flavor from the mushroom and the shallot but we don't want the fat. Now, whatever pan you use, there'll always be a little bit of guppings, a little bit of caramelized goodness stuck to the bottom of the pan. 
So I like to take a little bit of my stock and just deglaze it. Once you've cleaned off that flavor from the bottom of the pan, it goes straight back into your stock pot. Now this is the part where everything's ready to come together. Our wine has reduced by half. Our stock has reduced by a third. We've caramelized our onions. We've captured that flavor and put it back into the sauce. Our gravy browning, our mushrooms are beautifully sweated and have released all of their black juice. We're ready to build. So stock into the wine. Then we add our caramelized onions and mushrooms. Our stunningly sweated natural gravy browning. And at this stage, you can add some herbs. Now there is a rule I like to follow when I'm cooking and that's hard herbs at the start, soft herbs at the end. So for this, just two bay leaves into the pan. A couple of peppercorns for some spice. There's one key rule now we're at this stage to make this sauce clean and shiny, and that is skimming. I've got myself a hot pan of water with a clean ladle, and I'm just gonna create the whirlpool in the middle, pushing that scum to the outside of the pan. Then I collect the scum and wash it off in the hot water. So you're not putting a scummy ladle back into the sauce that you're trying to clean up. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a long, laborious job. It's a labor of love, but what you can do on a weekend is get this sauce on. It's your Sunday job, and then you're enjoying it throughout the week reheated you can get ahead this even freezes really well if you've got a steak date coming up perfect for valentine's day this is the sauce you need to make now we've taken the scum off of this sauce we've taken some of the fat content out i want to replace that with a clean fat element and that's going to be double cream now while all the ingredients are together what's happening it's infusing we're kind of treating it like a tea it's steeping, all the elements are giving each other their flavors. So after about 25 to 30 minutes of that happening, we can strain it off. So get yourself a fine strainer. This is a chinois. Chinois is actually another word for a Chinaman's hat. Get that into a clean pan and then pour your sauce in. Now it's important at this stage to squeeze out all of that juice. We put back on to reduce to intensify that flavor. Now at this stage, while it's reducing, there's a couple of things to get ready. Now don't get me wrong, reduction will take this sauce most of the way, but I don't want it to turn into a jammy, Marmite-esque type sauce. I want there to be flavor, freshness, a good body, an amazing punch. So for that, we're gonna thicken slightly when we get to the flavor that we want with a little bit of corn flour and or arrowroot. We've got the base flavor. I've reduced it. We've got the flavor exactly where we want it to be. Now we're talking freshness. We're pulling this sauce out of the ordinary and putting it up above the grates. And you do that with infusion of flavor. Tiny little nuances of herb, garlic, lemon zest, tiny bit of vinegar, salt, pepper. These balances, these flavors is what takes your food to the next level. And it's a very easy addition. I've got parsley, tarragon, anise, a great punch and flavor, and two cloves of garlic. Get those cracked. Does it take a lot of time? Yes. Is it quite expensive? Yes. Is there quite a lot of washing up? Yes. But is this probably one of the best sauces you're ever gonna taste? Absolutely. And for you to do it on a Sunday, experience that flavor and experience the process. It's not just about the food you get at the end of it. Making a proper sauce is an art form and it should be done properly. The heat goes off and then we infuse the flavors. It's been infusing now for five minutes and all those herbs have done their job. We're gonna strain them off before it goes stew. All that's left to do is rectify the seasoning because you will notice we haven't put any salt in this yet. You don't season your stocks or sauces until the end. So salt goes straight in. Good hit of pepper and a splash of good vinegar. With those little tiny adjustments, you end up taking this sauce to a whole new level. Full of body, the roasted shallot, the roasted mushroom, the flavor from the red wine, the flavor from the pork, the balance from the boiled mushrooms, that injection of fresh flavor at the end, tarragon, parsley, and garlic. Little hit of pepper, little hit of salt, and a tiny splash of vinegar. That's my perfect red wine jus for you to make at home. Avant you!